Welcome back to Mark and Misty's Performance, home of Mark's Racing Engines. Now that we've got our uh, camshaft degreed in, we need to check the piston to valve clearance. Um, you know, cam events are actually really what causes, well, I mean, lift does too, but more the valve events and the timing of the valve events is what really causes your piston to valve to clearance problems 90% of the time. This how this cam has advanced so far. Um, sometimes we, we might have a piston to valve clearance problem. So to check this, I'm going to show you the easiest way to do it. Uh, there are several different methods, but the way I do it, I use the clay method. And the reason is, is because it's easier for me to check the radial clearance as well as the depth. They typically say you want at least 75 thousandths on the intake side and uh, usually 100 thousandths on the exhaust side. I just say shoot for 100 thousandths straight across the board. I like to have no less than 70, 50 to 75 thousandths on the radial, you know, around the valve relief in this area right here. So, like I said, a flat top piston, this is really, really easy to do. A dome piston is a little harder, but you can still do it the same way. Uh, I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to do a big block uh, that, that we're working on that did have some piston to valve clearance problems, and we ended up having to fly cut the pistons. And uh, fly cutting, for those of you don't know, who don't know, that's going in and cutting the valve reliefs out. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. ISKI sells a, uh, a fly cutting tool that you can actually put in a cylinder head and, and do it that way. Uh, I don't prefer that method, although it's it works good. Uh, I prefer using uh, going ahead and marking them and and cutting them in the mill in the piston vise. All right, so the first thing you need to do here is we need now you need to use whatever head gasket you're going to use. Uh, this is why I keep old head gaskets laying around. I keep them laying around for for using on the torque plate when I torque plate home, uh, and also. Uh, for piston to valve and you know mock-ups and stuff like that. Uh, I have a whole stack of head gaskets over there for different things. Uh, this particular engine is going to use a 1003 Felpro, so that's what we're going to check it with. Now uh, this is 43, 41 or 43 thousandths. Uh, I can't remember. I think it's 40, I think it's 43 thousandths when it's it's compressed thickness. This is an extremely good head gasket. Uh, I mean I've even <laughs> sprayed a lot of nitrous on these head gaskets. They're not so great for boost but uh, they will work if you keep the boost down, but for, uh, say, a dirt engine or something like that, the 1003 Fel Felpro head gasket is hard to beat. It's a very forgiving gasket. It's got a steel stainless steel wire O-ring embedded inside of the fire ring. Uh, anyway, we'll get into head gaskets later, but right now what we're going to do, well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put clay in the piston, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on the piston, and... Uh, I know some people that have used Play-Doh, I don't know, just whatever, if you want to steal your kids Play-Doh. This right here is modeling clay, you can buy it at Walmart, uh, it comes in, I got some. Yeah, it just comes in a package like like this, and I mean it lasts for a long, long time. I think I bought this pack literally 20 years ago, I think I bought this four pack, and I've still got one brand new stick, there's four in a box. So anyway, you kind of got to knead this stuff around to get it uh, to get it kind of loose. And you want to clean out those valve reliefs so that they don't have any oil or anything in them because you don't want anything to stick to them. Man, where are you so. We're going to clean these out and make absolutely sure. And sometimes it will stick. If it does, you just got to do it again. So, what we're going to do, we're going to put this clay in these valve release. And you want to try not to get this in the ring lands because if you do, you'll have to pull, pull the piston bag out and clean them. So, try not to get too much in there, but you want enough. Just, just up here. 
work on. And all I'm doing is just kind of pushing that stuff in there and making sure it's, it's all the way down. Then what I'm going to do is take a machinist rule like this, or you can use a feeler gauge or something. This off, I'm just going to saw it right off the top. Now, like I said, on a double piston, you can't really do this part right here. You just got to kind of guesstimate on how much needs to be in there. That's what you got to do. All right. I'll shoot a video on that. I got, like I said, I got a big block. We just have a black button. I got to check it one last time. All right, so we, you see what the piston looks like now. I think you can see that, maybe. I'll try to get this camera at a different angle. Sorry. All right, that's what we're working with now. Now, you can check it without the head gasket. These pistons actually protrude uh, about, about 5,000, so I can't. I have to put the head gasket on it. But if you do it, you just need to add whatever the whatever your end result is. You need to add your valve clearance, your, your valve lash clearance, and the thickness of the head gasket to your reading. Now, I'm going to zoom back out here. Oop, wrong way. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bolt the cylinder head on, but I'm not going to put all the head bolts in it. I'm just going to put some used head bolts in it. Purposes. We're actually going to set the cylinder head on there, but before we do, I don't have this in camera view. Uh, I'm going to spray the combustion chamber of number one here with a little bit of WD-40 so that the that it won't, so it won't stick to the. Then I'm going to stick the head on there. Uh, and never mind the valve springs that are on here. These valve springs are break-in springs, and I know they're two different kinds of spring. Uh, but they're the lightest springs I can find in the shop to break the seams in. Here. Now I'm using this little impact right here to uh, put these bolts in. Do not do this when you're putting the head on there. Don't do it that way. First thing I've got to do is okay, down. There it goes. Alright. Now what we need to do is put two lifters in it. Okay, we're back. So I'm checking a couple of things here. I'm also going to check the make sure the valve geometry is right. And since we've got the uh, the correct head gasket on it, and we've got the push rods that we're going to use, uh, or we think we're going to use, we want to make sure that the valve geometry is right. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to mark the tip of the valve with a marker. Now there's several ways to do this too, but this is the quickest, easiest way to see if your valve geometry is right. Alright, now we're going to rotate the engine over until we got the exhaust valve starting to open and that's where, that means that the intake valve is on the base circuit. This is also the time to check to make sure you're, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. It's also the time to check under the rocker to make sure you have clearance between the rocker and the, uh, and the shoulder of the stud. Make sure you don't have any clearance problems there. Uh, now I had to cut these down, I had to cut these guide bosses down even though they were already tapped for screw-in studs. These are the IMCA heads for uh, uh, the sport mods, uh, the EQ IMCA head, but I had to cut these down because uh, they they weren't 
they weren't set up for guide plates, so I had to cut the amount of the guide plate off to get the studs down lower. Uh, otherwise, you'll run into problems with the, the rocker being rubbing the stud. All right, so I'm just going to set this at zero lash, which means I'm just going to let it just touch. Now, you have to take your lash into account when you're going for piston to valve clearance, but this is not much lash. This is only 16,000, so that's what I'll have to add to my final clearance. So now that we've done that, now we're going to roll the engine over slowly. This is also the time you check for coil bind. Make sure you don't have coil bind issues or something like that. I've already set all that up, but like I said, these springs here are springs just for breaking the cam in. Uh, then it's going to get 295D uh, ISPE springs after that, which are the best inch and quarter spring you can get. Alright, so we rotate it around until the Intake rocker opens the valve all the way up and is about halfway closed. And then we're going to put our exhaust rocker on there because we know that it's on the base circuit. Alright, now we're going to Like I said, we're just going to screw this down, zero lash it. It's not real tight, so it's just touching right there. And now we're going to rotate the engine over. We've gone through our intake stroke. We're going to go through the exhaust. All right, now we can start making checks. First thing to do, pull the rockers back off. And check our pattern, which seems to be... Uh, we might need... Uh, it's, it's right in the center. I don't know if y'all can see that in the camera or not, but the, 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 the wear pattern is right in the center of the valve, and that's what you want. I'm gonna try to, try to get it closer. Kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see that pattern right there. It's in the center, and that's where it needs to be. Is in the center. All right, so we know we're good there. Now, if if that pattern on the valve, on the top of the valve, if, if that pattern was towards the outside of the head, that means you would need shorter push rods. Okay, because it, what it's done is it's got the rocker more forward. If it's back here if it's way back here then you need longer push rods and all of that changes when you start milling the heads and the block and everything it all kind of changes you can't just throw a set of stock push length push rods in there and, and expect it to work these I, I know I've done enough of these engines I knew exactly what length push rods I was actually going to have these are actually a hundred thousand shorter uh, because of everything I had to cut on the engine. so or I'm sorry no those are fifty thousand short not a hundred all right, so now we've we've done that. We've checked our valve geometry. Now we can move on to our piston to valve clearance and see if it's good. So we're going to pull the head back off of it and see what we've got. Yeah, those valve holes tight. Okay, that's a wonderful thing to see what I'm seeing right now. As you can see. The exhaust valve just barely touched that valve, the, the clay in the valve pocket. The intake didn't, I mean, the, I'm sorry, the intake touched just barely. The exhaust valve didn't touch at all. It's not even close. So we know we've got plenty of piston to valve clearance. But, you know, there's times when you start milling on stuff, especially when you angle mill and you run a cam that's, that's advanced a whole bunch, your intake valve will get real close to it. But I'll just tell you, I'll, we'll just measure this and see. And the way you do that is you just come right on in here and measure with the machinist ruler or a pair of calipers. And I've got plenty. I've got well over 200 thousandths there. So we know we're good to go in the valve clearance department. So let me, let me just give you a close-up of that. I'm sorry for the camera moving around, but...
you can see right here and you can see where I measured it and it's hard to get on camera but that's that ruler right there measures in thousands so uh, I know we got plenty there all right so so now we can go ahead and finish assembling this engine uh, we got ah, come on up there hey I'll crank this thing up I think it cranks up look at there we're going up <laughs> cool you gotta forgive me I've never been a good videographer you can tell by my videos anyway so we're ready to put this thing together now we've got all our checks made we've checked the piston and the valve clearance we've checked our rocker geometry uh, all the clearances in the bottom have been checked now, I didn't show it on this engine because I was in a hurry to get this thing done uh, but I do have other videos I'm going to post of, of checking clearances and all that and how you do it. Uh, the, the cheap way, the expensive way, uh, we're going get, to get to some of that. But now that, we, now that we know everything is good, now we can assemble this engine and not have to worry about it. Uh, we know what the cam degree is, we know, what the, uh, we know our push rod length is right, we know everything is right. So now we can just put it together. So if you don't check these things, they'll come back and bite you in the ass later because, you know, I have run into instances where, uh, you know, I went to go check the piston the valve clearance, you know, and the customer's going to pick the motor up the next day. And I check the piston the valve clearance, I'm like, uh-oh, we don't have enough. And so I got to call them and tell them, hey, it's going to be an extra day because I got to tear this thing back down and, and check it. Normally, if I think something's going to be off, I will mock it up with one piston and check the piston to valve clearance with just one rod and piston and see where we're at. And I've done enough of this combination right here that I knew that it was going to be okay. But you really need to, if it's something you've never used, especially if you change the cam or something, you need to check the piston to valve clearance. Uh, most of the time when you buy an off-the-shelf cam for like an LS or something like that, and you're using stock components, you're pretty safe if you're not they're going to pretty much tell you or somebody's going to have encountered that and you're going to you're going to know uh, but if it's if it's kind of the unknown or you don't know check it doesn't hurt to check it all right well that's going to do it for this edition of mark and misty's performance and uh i'll try to get back at you with some more videos see you around oh yeah one more thing make sure you get all the clay out of there from checking make sure you get it all out of there and make sure you wipe those uh, valve reliefs out with some brake clean on a paper towel or something like that you do not want that clay in your engine so anyway like I said see you around